This set of PowerPoint slides will be devoted to the topic of schizophrenia. Sometimes it's just referred to as psychosis. Schizophrenia can be reactive, meaning that it occurs in a single episode, usually in response to a traumatic event in a person's life, and then it goes away and never comes back. However, most of the time when somebody is diagnosed as schizophrenic, what they're dealing with is what's known as process schizophrenia. It means it's chronic and it's recurrent, and it's something that's going to be with the person for a very long time. A person could be diagnosed with schizophrenia at any age, but the most common time of life for a person to exhibit schizophrenic symptoms for the first time is during young adulthood, roughly between the ages of 18 and 30. It's relatively rare for a young child to be schizophrenic, and if it hasn't shown up in an individual uh, well before they're middle-aged, uh, it's unlikely to happen after that. There are a variety of different symptoms of schizophrenia, and most people will not have all of them. Some of these symptoms are described as positive symptoms. Others are described as negative symptoms. Positive symptoms of schizophrenia are symptoms, there are things, behaviors that are present that should not be. The most common of these is thought and speech disorders. The person's thinking is completely disorganized and that's reflected in their speech. They'll often speak in what's called word salads. They string together uh, words and sentences that don't make any sense. They may be doing something called clanging, where the words that they say are just a, a string of things that rhyme on time because it's time and it's mine, and they just say things because they sound a certain way, not because they have any um, specific meaning that they're trying to communicate. Their thinking can also be excessively concrete. They may lose the ability to grasp subtle linguistic things like uh, sarcasm or metaphors. Schizophrenics may also experience hallucinations. Uh, the hallucinations are usually auditory. Most commonly, the individual hears voices. Uh, visual hallucinations can occur, but they're much rarer. Delusions of some sort are also a very common symptom of schizophrenia. And there are many different types of delusions that a person can have. Delusions of persecution, for example, occur when a person believes that other people are plotting against them, talking about them behind their back, scheming to do them harm in some way. Delusions of grandeur include a feeling of importance and significance about oneself that goes far beyond any evidence. They really do believe that they are special people um, better than everyone else. Some schizophrenics can have somatic delusions where they have unrealistic ideas about their body and what their body can do. So they may believe that they can stop their heart anytime they want, or they may believe that they can fly, but they have unrealistic beliefs about what is physically possible for them to do. Delusions of control occur when a person has unrealistic ideas of their ability to control something or unrealistic beliefs about being controlled by something. So the classic examples you hear about people thinking that aliens have implanted a chip in their brain uh, or that they're being controlled by mind control by someone um, in another country, uh, those are examples of delusions of control. Delusions of reference occur when the individual sees messages to themselves everywhere. Nothing in the world around them is just random. They see meaning, personal messages. Maybe the messages come from God or from other people, but they see a meaning in things that are just total random patterns. Negative symptoms of schizophrenia are things that uh, are missing from a person's behavioral repertoire that ordinarily should be there. So the person may show uh, a complete loss of emotional capability. They either experience no emotions whatsoever or they experience inappropriate emotions, but most of the time they just don't seem to have any emotional response to anything at all. Their speech becomes very limited uh, and not very rich. It's very a couple of nouns and a few verbs and not much more to it. They tend to withdraw socially. 
They don't have a desire to do anything. And the person seems to have completely lost the inability to experience pleasure. A person who's diagnosed as schizophrenic, if they show at least one positive symptom of schizophrenia and at least two symptoms overall. And this has to be coupled with a deterioration of daily functioning. So basically the person uh, starts to become a problem for themselves. They can't take care of themselves. They can't manage their life or they become a nuisance to other people. So their daily function is severely impaired and they're showing at least two overall symptoms of schizophrenia with one of them being a positive symptom. Another thing that leads to an immediate diagnosis of schizophrenia is if the person displays what's known as catatonia. Uh, in catatonia, the person alternates between a fixed catatonic posture. The individual almost looks like a mannequin frozen in place. And you can even go over to the person and rearrange their arms and legs in the position of their head, and they will hold the new position. This is known as waxy flexibility. These catatonic um, trances alternate then with periods of repetitive activity where the person may rock back and forth for hours at a time or uh, engage in some repetitive muscle tick over and over and over or they pace back and forth. Uh, so when they're flipping back and forth between these two states of being, it's a clear sign of schizophrenia. For quite some time, there was a debate raging about the extent to which schizophrenia was entirely due to a chemical malfunction in the brain or to what extent it was due to uh, psychological stress and conflict. Uh, there's now widespread agreement that schizophrenia is clearly a biologically based disorder. Uh, a person who develops schizophrenia is an individual who has a biological predisposition toward it, but it may not manifest itself unless the person experiences a severely traumatic or stressful period of time in their life. The positive symptoms of schizophrenia, things like hallucinations and disordered thinking, uh, seem to be the result of too much dopamine activity. And this can be treated pretty successfully with uh, drugs for most people. The negative symptoms of schizophrenia, on the other hand, appear to be due to an actual loss of brain tissue, and these are more difficult to deal with. There is evidence for a strong genetic link in schizophrenia, so that if you have relatives that are schizophrenic, so uh, cousins, uncles, parents, grandparents, uh, your probability of developing disorder are higher than if you did not have any genetic relatives who have shown uh, schizophrenic behavior in the past. There's also evidence that there might be biological influences on the disorder that are not genetic. Uh, there's a curious finding that people who are born during the winter in northern latitudes, so you're pretty far from the equator, are at greater risk for this. So if you're born in January or February, for example, you're more likely to develop the disease than if you were born in the summer. Nobody really knows why this is the case. There's some hypotheses that perhaps people born in the winter were more likely to have a mother who had the flu or some infectious disease while she was pregnant and that this in some way or other developed or disrupted development. And um, one of the side effects of that is a propensity for schizophrenia. We don't really know, but that's a curious um, factoid about schizophrenia.